Hello, I'm Dr. Benita Rata, and I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is about rosacea. We're going to be talking about what it is, what causes it, what makes it worse, how to treat it, and the mistakes that people make right at the end. I'm also gonna go through product recommendations. As you know, none of my videos have ever been sponsored and they will never be sponsored. This means we're basically creating a evidence-based video library for you so you know what to purchase and what to avoid. If that sounds good to you, give me a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. So let's start off with what is it? It is a chronic inflammatory skin condition. It tends to take place actually more in Europeans. So basic Northern and Western Europeans, it only takes place in about 4% of the population that are Asian or African. So it's not that common um, to actually have rosacea when you have skin of color. However, if you do have it and you have skin of color, you have to be careful because with us, our melanocytes are larger and they are easier to trigger already. So as I always say, one scratch, one bite or one burn and we hyperpigment. But when you have rosacea, your skin is already more sensitive. And if you use products on your skin that burn the skin or irritate the skin, it's not just a temporary irritation, it leads to hyperpigmentation, which is why when you have rosacea in skin of color, it's it can be far worse, it can be affect your life more um, because of the consequences of you trying to treat the rosacea. You have to be far more careful with skin of color than you are with Caucasian skin. So there are a number of known potential triggers for this. It could be down to your immunity, it could be down to vascular disorders. Another one tends to be UV radiation, which is why it tends to be worse in the sun and um, infectious agents too. Now, the clinical course of the disease can vary from person to person. It tends to start off when you're younger with just redness of the skin. So temporary flushing or temporary erythema. Erythema is just another word for redness. And this gradually persists and it takes longer and longer for the redness to go. And on top of that, you start to get t langactasia, which is when you can see broken capillaries under the skin. This all tends to indicate that this is a vascular condition and studies have also shown that there's increased blood flow in those erythema areas, in the red areas. I'm sure there are other triggers that you've probably noticed, including stress, uh, menopause can make it worse, alcohol, spicy food, um, and sometimes even exercise. So anything that basically makes you go red um, when you have rosacea is just another phenomenon where the skin becomes more sensitive to. For those of you who have an immune dysregulation, this can happen in response to UV radiation, microorganisms, injury from physical or chemical injuries such as burns, the environment such as wind, hot weather or steam, and also cosmetics that you put on the skin that are not NAFE safe. So things that can irritate the skin can make it worse. So for example, if you have rosacea and you try using retinol, which is an alcohol which can be irritating, it can flare up the rosacea. So you have to be a lot more careful with which creams you purchase. And actually this whole channel, I only ever recommend NAFE safe products. That means no denatured alcohol, no fragrance, no essential oils. These things can sensitize the skin and dry the skin, which is exact opposite of what you want when you have rosacea. So all the triggers I've just discussed can basically increase the cytokines in your skin. And these are uh, signaling mechanisms that tell the skin to, we're now in an inflammatory mode. Uh, to produce inflammatory mediators and this then leads to more blood flow in that area which makes your rosacea worse. Now when we talk about microorganisms and rosacea there are two main microorganisms that we're talking about Demodex folliculorum and H. pylori. Let's start off with Demodex folliculorum. This is a parasite that lives in the sebaceous gland and can lead to inflammation of the hair follicle. Clinical studies have basically shown that there's an increased amount of parasites in people with rosacea skin compared to healthy skin. H. pylori, on the other hand, is a little bit more controversial um, because studies tend to contradict each other. H. pylori is found in the blood serum of rosacea um, patients, which means that there's an increased amount of antibodies to H. pylori in those with rosacea. These are small potential triggers. The big one, however, is UV radiation. UV radiation equals more erythema, 
due to vasodilatation. So basically increased cytokines in the skin equals increased angiogenesis, which means new blood capillary formation, and of course more inflammation. Moving on to reactive oxygen species. Now we all produce this. Um, it happens when UV hits the skin, uh, free radicals form, but it also happens in your mitochondria, in your body. Now this leads to an oxidative stress and this basically can reduce your natural defenses, but also it increases cytokine production. So i.e. the mediator for inflammation. This is one of the key reasons you really want to be ingesting antioxidants and using antioxidants on the skin. So foods that are full of antioxidants are colourful foods. Um, so it's easy to remember beetroot, um, broccoli, uh, oranges, and then of course on the skin itself using antioxidants such as vitamin C. I wouldn't use vitamin A uh, retinol for rosacea, I'd rather use either retinol palmitate, which you can basically find in the in our Dr. Nita Rattan Power Antioxidant Serum, which is your fat-soluble vitamin C, retinol palmitate, so non-irritating form of vitamin A, and your vitamin E and coenzyme Q10. So you basically want to use antioxidants like that that are non-irritating, but will mop up free radicals. Foods that we tend to say to avoid would be things like spicy food, um, drinks such as caffeine and alcohol. Some people even say to stay away from dairy, so things like cheese and chocolate. We also tend to say to avoid smoking because of nicotine, which is a vasodilator too. So because this is a chronic condition, it really is about managing the condition. You want to avoid triggers as much as possible because every time you trigger the skin, it takes longer for the erythema to go. So you end up in a cycle where, you know, you trigger the skin, it's taking ages, trigger the skin again, and it takes ages. So actually understanding your skin and how to take care of your skin really is key to managing rosacea. So what do we do step by step? The first thing you want to do is block UV from hitting the skin. This is the number one cause. So you want to be using, I would recommend a minimal SPF 50. The reason is uh, zinc oxide in your mineral sunscreen is anti-inflammatory. So for example, in um, our Inzincable, uh, which you can find from our website, skincarebyr.tv down below, it's got 17% zinc oxide in it, which is anti-inflammatory. So you, I would rather you wore a physical sunscreen over a chemical sunscreen with rosacea. I'd also recommend a wide-brimmed hat to avoid any direct sunlight on the skin. If your rosacea is mainly here in the zygoma area, so the cheekbone area, then you can get yourself a pair of these. So this basically, I use this for my melasma on my cheekbones and it prevents UV from hitting my skin. And these are Dr. V sunglasses. So they're massive, but they're great for driving because when you're driving, um, sun it tends to be quite low and in it hits the face and the skin is red, you know, one hour later. I would manage your diet and stress levels because any form of stress makes chronic skincare conditions worse. It ages the skin. If you have eczema, it worsens your eczema. If you have acne, it worsens your acne. Any condition you have worsens with stress. So this is, considering this is a chronic condition, I would be doing everything I can to manage my stress levels. I also recommend you opt for mild skincare. Just because, you know, on TikTok, there's the 30% AHA, BHA, um, the red vial that everyone's using, that would not be suitable for rosacea. It will burn the skin and it will lead to hyperpigmentation for skin of color. So you just need to think of your skin as very sensitive and needs to be taken care of gently. Even the actives that you choose should be mild. They should have the same pH as your skin. I would avoid acids as much as possible. So I've written out a routine for you on what I would recommend. So this routine is actually tried and tested because my husband has rosacea. You know, it, it affects him. So I basically made this routine for him, which he's been doing for years and has controlled his rosacea. So first thing in the morning, I would wash your face with a micellar gel wash. You can use the one from Simple. However, because um, of sensitive skin, um, the one that I basically, the ingredients I put into our micellar gel wash contains niacinamide, uh, which is strength as a skin barrier. Plus I put in Centella Asiatica. 
and panthenol, which are both anti-inflammatory. Plus I put in glycerin, which is a water magnet. So you're holding water in that top layer of skin because with rosacea, you basically want to create a healing environment for the skin and you don't want to overstrip the skin when you're washing it. That's the first mistake that gets made. So this is our micellar gel wash, which you can purchase from the link below too. Second, you really should use a fatty moisturizer that has some key ingredients. You want ceramides in there because ceramides are lipids, they're fats that basically retain water in that top layer of skin and give you that healing environment. And you want a long-term moisturizer. You don't want a lotion where water is evaporating from the skin and the skin feels tight. You want something that's gonna feel hydrated all day. So ingredients to look for in your moisturizer would be things like ceramides, peptides, anti-inflammatories, you want niacinamide too, which strengthens your skin barrier, and humectant. So those are the key ingredients you really want in a nice, nafe safe moisturizer for rosacea. So the couple that I love, I do love CeraVe because there's ceramides in it. Um, I love Cetraben. Um, it's a very simple, nafe safe moisturizer. It doesn't contain all the bells and whistles that I discussed, but it's a fatty moisturizer. And then the one that I made was the CeraPep Brightening Moisturizer. And in here, I basically applied, put in the niacinamide, your ceramides, peptides, and anti-inflammatories. Now with after this, you really need to apply your SPF 50, considering UV is the, um, can really make rosacea worse. And especially if you're in a hot country, SPF 50 is non-negotiable. So after your nafe safe moisturizer, apply your anti anti-inflammatory sunscreen. So ideally look for mineral sunscreens, things that say 100% mineral sunscreen. Some of them are hybrid, some of them you know, have mineral plus chemical. Chemical I'm not a huge fan of for a number of reasons. Number one, it's not great for sensitive skin. Number two, I like to put sunscreen around the eye area because this is where you tend to wrinkle first and actually zinc oxide is much better for around the eye area. It's a lot more gentle on the skin and is good for sensitive eyes too. Now things that you must avoid are exfoliation. Exfoliation is not your friend. We're trying to strengthen the barrier. The barrier is weak and damaged. So please never exfoliate. Avoid retinol. I'd rather you go for retinol palmitate or retinaldehyde. These are less irritating versions of vitamin A. Avoid ascorbic acid. Instead, opt for tetrahexyl ascorbate. That's a fat soluble vitamin C which actually strengthens um, the collagen, so it actually penetrates down into the dermis. Avoid lactic acid too, which is just another acid that exfoliates, uh, menthol as well, so things that tingle the skin basically. For your nighttime routine, uh, wash your face with your micellar gel wash again. You want to remove the sunscreen or any makeup from the day. Then apply your antioxidant serum that has the same pH as your skin, so is non-irritating. So for example, the one that I you know, give to my husband is our antioxidant power serum, followed by your NAFE safe moisturizer. So you want to create that healing environment on the skin. If your skin is particularly dry, you may also want to use a barrier oil on top, something like marula oil from The Ordinary is excellent. Drug Elephant does a very good one too. And that will just continue to retain water on the skin. So minimize trans epidermal water loss. Don't forget to download your free guide for skin of color down below. It's a new version. Uh, please do follow me on Instagram I've got two accounts, Dr. Vinita Ratan and Skincare by Dr. V. We tend to do a lot of the pre-work for YouTube on there. So I tend to poll on there, ask you questions, find out what videos you want me to make. So do do that. And don't forget to subscribe here and hit the notif notification bell because I'm in the comments for one hour at the launch of every single video. So please do make use of that. Also, we've got this beautiful private Facebook group called Dr. V Sock Family, which is incredible. And I highly recommend you join. It's a, it's a safe space that we can talk about our skincare issues, you can upload your photos, and there are thousands of us in this group which can, who can help each other. Um, so it's, it's just a beautiful place to be, and I really do recommend you join if skincare is something that affects you. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!